The depth to which analysis can take this seems virtually limitless. Once we've begun that far, we can go even further. The square that we created, if we draw diagonals through it, we begin to see additional features. Look here. The upper eye of the base F exactly rests on that diagonal. But look over here. The upper eye of the treble F is above it by a millimeter. Now, what is this going on that this millimeter is taken away one place and given back another? This does not look like error. This looks like very clever design. We have to ask, what's going on? Something's up here. These outer circles, which are based upon the information left on the center of the form, does additional things which make us realize that the F-holes are multi-determined. They are not given any degree of freedom for the artistic taste of the maker. Numerous other connections can be drawn all around the body. Some we've seen, this diagram offers a number of new thoughts about how this was constructed. What it suggests is that the whole design is knit together uh, almost uh, like a fractal pattern of repeating um, connections, one imitating the other at differing magnitudes. One feature that could have a, an acoustic impact on the violin, which might explain why so much care was taken by Stradivari in designing it, is that harmonics have multiple redundant layers and the violin by having these very slight asymmetries which nevertheless connect the F's to different parts of the anatomy left to right bring back to mind that the Italians call the F hole the foro harmonico the harmonic hole what if Stradivari has adopted this slight asymmetry so that the treble F will have a specific, uh, I would uh, venture to say, Pythagorean proportional connection to some parts of the anatomy, while the base F connects to other parts of the anatomy equally precisely but differently so that the entire harmony of the instrument is made more complex and a perfectly symmetrical design could not produce the timbre and the quality of sound that a slightly asymmetrical but thought through design could do. We must remember that they inherited a tradition which goes back at least to the 8th century of instrument making in which geometry was applied to the construction of instruments. Andrea Amati, as the founder of the School of Violin Making in Cremona, followed similar slight asymmetries as Stradivari did. This was passed down from generation to generation, and yet in such a secretive way that it has never been fully explored, even now. We've already seen that there are layer upon layer upon layer of meaning and interconnection in this simple, seemingly simple, elegant form of Stradivari. This is another level of analysis shown here in which the outline has been located 
by means of compass centers and arcs of circles. Because the outer form is not a pure circle, it has often been thought to be some different form, geometric or non-geometric. But in fact, you can locate every part of the outline of a Stradivari violin with a compass. That means every bit of it is rational, every bit of it is determined by the use of a compass. So in searching for the outline of the instrument, compass centers can be tested against the arc that you draw and when you draw an arc that exactly matches you know you're on the money but when you diverge even slightly as you see this little line here you know that it's time to stop and look for a different radius so this is the point where the radius changes and from here we have the first radius but from here way down much longer we have a second and flatter radius that goes across the very top of the instrument. Then the connection to the shorter radius begins again on the other side, so this is rather symmetrically um, aligned. You might notice that these are all on the line of the greatest width of the top bout. Again, where this, uh, the circle diverges, you know you've got to find another line, which is this great long one, which connects here and goes into the corner. But if we allow, let's say, this circle to be drawn all the way around, and this one to be drawn all the way around, it's interesting that they connect along the center line. So he's pulled apart a common um, circle and created the width of the bout. Down below we see the same thing. The dotted line is the continuation of a circle of the outer bouts pulled apart and it touches the two exactly on the center line. You see here the compass discovery of the various points where these circles are formed and how they diverge here and then a different radius is necessary to connect them to the corners. There is a central point around which a circle can be drawn. It exactly defines the outer limits of the four corners. So they, like the outer edges we've already seen cut by circles, are defined by circles. And the whole thing is developed along the center line of the inner form. We've already looked at many of the connections with the F's, but here is a circle that touches all four of the centers of the FI's. So we're not through with our discovery yet, and there's more beyond this. The meaning of all these connections is yet to be discussed.